Good morning. Every year I uh, visit a kindergarten class and with the help of the teacher, ask the students there, all five-year-olds, to draw for me what a stranger looks like. And then I tell them, when you're done with your drawing, raise your hand and your teacher will come to your desk and tell her in your own words what your drawing means. I brought some for you to see this morning. Here's the first one. He is a stranger that is going to catch the kid. The second one, and my personal favorite, he has one eye, a gun, and he's fat. He wouldn't be a woman because a woman wouldn't be a criminal. <laughs> this is the stranger he is stealing babies. Notice how the children put X's over one of the eyes. This is a child's way of saying to you when you say to them, never talk to strangers, they are looking for someone scary, demonic, evil, monster looking. When in fact, we know that if that was the case, children could not be lured. If someone presented to a child in this manner, what would the natural reaction of a child be? To run away, not to be drawn to them. And this ignorance of the crime has pervaded it for years. And we kind of looked for a guy uh, that looked uh, very scary and intimidating looking. And so we say to ourselves, well, how did children get that disconnect? Seems pretty fundamental when we say to a child, never talk to strangers. What do we mean by that? We mean don't talk to anyone you don't know. Seems pretty simple. So where does he get disconnected? Well, Here's what happens. Children not only mimic what we say, they also mimic what we do. So if you think they've grasped that concept, when the doorbell rings and you answer the door and your six-year-old daughter is coming down the stairs unbeknownst to you and she sees mommy open the door and a man she's never seen before in her life hand her a bouquet of flowers, she says to herself, well, it can't be someone I don't know because my mommy doesn't know who that man is. It could be the UPS driver, it could be the FedEx driver, it could be the pizza delivery boy, but one thing's for sure, the child no longer connects the dots that you thought they did because now they've seen a man they've never seen before. Their mother is engaged in a great conversation with them, very happy, of course, to get something from the florist, um, and now the child is confused. One thing we know about children, if they can be confused, they can be exploited. ABC did an excellent documentary on this a few years ago. They sent Chris Wallace and a film crew into a park where a playground, a bunch of kids were playing on the jungle gym and the monkey bars and whatnot. And Chris Wallace went up to a picnic table full of parents who were sitting there, about 16 a total, and said to them, if a perfect stranger in the next minute or so walked into this park and tried to convince your son or daughter to leave with them, would they go? 16 parents said, absolutely not, emphatically. In fact, one father said, my kid won't even talk to you. You're going to see every one of these children walk out of the park with a man they've never met. I'm going to explain to you how he did it, and then a mistake that ABC made. Now, did you hear what Mr. Gibson said to Mr. Wooden? You hardly look like a predator. That's exactly what a predator looks like. Well-groomed, soft-spoken, there's nothing fearsome about Mr. Wooden. That's why he walked into a park with a bunch of children that he had never met, that they had never met, and was able to convince them to leave. Now, Patrick, the first little boy, initially skeptical. Um, then he notices that, you know, here's an adult asking a child for assistance, the number one lure that works with children, adults acting for assistance. Patrick's a pretty smart little 10-year-old guy. He can connect the dots. Here's a, a man with a leash with no dog in it. Shows him a picture of a 10-week-old yellow lab. I know you couldn't see it, but, but I did. Some of you would have been out looking for this dog. It was so adorable. So Patrick pretty quickly says, this is not someone that's going to hurt me. He's got a dog leash with no dog in it. He's got a picture of a missing puppy. And then he says to Patrick the most empowering thing you can say to any child. My puppy's name is Shorty, and he only answers to the voices of little girls and little boys. Anything a child has been taught, especially never talk to strangers, now is gone. There's nothing strange about this man. It's someone that needs help. He's got a missing little dog. Patrick is all in, as were all the other children. 
And this is how quickly an abduction can take place. Uh, parents believe that never talk to strangers is enough. The child gets it, the child doesn't get it. The way they process what we mean and what happens is two entirely different things. So, the good news is the FBI Behavioral Science Unit, also known as the Silence of the Lambs guys, these are the ones that get into the minds and psyches of individuals that are predators, um, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children came up with a group of lessons that we now teach children that replaced Never Talk to Strangers. Um, I have this as a handout. Um, my call for action for you all today is to go back to your schools and your police departments and your parents' groups and anyone else you can and tell them that Never Talk to Strangers doesn't work. And if they want this handout and me to explain it, they have to invite me to their school. But one of the things that we have found the most critical for parents is this, is what is basically called the buddy system. In the buddy system, we now teach children is you basically don't go anywhere without somebody with you. If you're going to the restroom in a movie theater, if you're going with a friend, if you're going out to play, always have a second child with you. One of the things I can tell you, having worked with these predators for 30 years, is they don't like a second child. It's too, too high of a risk for a witness, someone to get a license plate, etc. One of the things that we know is, if you ever watch the National Geographic Channel um, or Discovery Channel, have you ever seen that lioness in that tall grass in the middle of the African desert just stalking those poor, dumb gazelle? This is nature's natural predator. That lioness has one mission in life, and that is to bring enough meat home to her pride. And she doesn't care if it's a gazelle or a zebra or what it is. But this is the hot African desert. And for her to sprint across it, chasing the youngest and the fastest, is not something that she considers worthwhile when she can wait for one to stray from the herd. Predators, whether they're human or they're in nature, operate the same, and he's the same way. He waits for a child to leave the herd, to be isolated, so that he has an opportunity. I was teaching this to a, uh, a rather large parent-teacher conference one day, and one of the women in the audience said to me, I went to your talk about a year ago, and I employed this buddy system, and I want to tell you what happened. And I said, okay. She said, I actually had to create a virtual buddy system. And I said, hesitatingly, okay, well, how does that work? And she said, well, <clears throat> my uh, seven-year-old son announced the other day when I told him I was taking him to the movies, he said, Mom, I'm, I'm excited about going to the movies with you, but if I have to use the restroom, I'm not going to go into the women's room anymore with you. I'm going into the men's room. I'm a boy, and that's where I belong. And she said, but I can't go into the men's room with you, and I can't protect you and you're too little, and I'm worried about you. And she said, eventually they went back and forth, and you have to pick your battles with children. So finally she said, okay, here's the deal. I'll let you go into the men's room by yourself, but I'm going to be outside the door. And the entire time you're in there, if you don't sing the Star Spangled Banner, <laughs> as soon as I hear you stop, I'm coming in. Now, this is a child with no spatial acuity, but he is determined his mother's not going to embarrass him. And he is literally yodeling <laughs> the national anthem while he is at the urinal to make sure that she does not come in and embarrass him. And she said when he reached the age of 10, it finally came to a close at the Meadowlands. They were at a Giants game. She was outside the door, and two men came out. She overheard them saying, like, there is one patriotic kid in that urinal. <laughs> So she said, I couldn't be in there with him as his buddy, but I created a virtual buddy system, and she said it worked, and I congratulate her on her, and I've been using that story ever since because it just goes to show that if you're determined uh, to work with a child to protect them, you can, that a lot of the myths and legends that we know about this individual, uh, we've learned a lot in the last 30 years, unfortunately through a lot of bad experiences, but we have learned, and now, all these lessons that we've replaced the Never Talk to Strangers with, uh, we hope that children will be safer, they'll be better educated, and I have targeted the parents and teachers because they have our children about 16 hours a day and the rest of the time spending it with the FBI and the sex crimes detectives so they know how to go out and target these guys. Thank you for your attention, and thanks for having me.